extend the pressure on us. And uh, I, as we've said previously, uh, it is vital for both sides to take action to prevent even greater loss. Said, so let me. Uh, let, uh, it's a simple question. Are they under occupation? Said, let me say a couple of things. Um, uh, to the point yeah. that I believe are they occupied or are they not occupied? In the UN terminology language, in the international legitimacy, this is not contested. The Palestinian people live under a prolonged Israeli military occupation. I believe the Biden administration realizes today the power of narrative. They are very, very aware of the impact of discourse nowadays, specifically the framing of the conflict. So we see the American administration focusing on the role of liberal peace building agenda when it comes to the Palestinian Israeli context, a process that had embedded a deeply unjust and inequitable status quo. To just try to interpret oh, why the spokesperson did not or avoided, refrained from saying military occupation and speaking about Israel, well, basically, in the 21st century, it would be absurd, just absurd for any conscious person to accept the existence of any military occupation and apartheid against any peoples. America offering money to the Palestinians is nice. We appreciate prosperity. We appreciate economic normalization. However, this shall not bring um, a solution to the Middle East. So the American lip service and the ATM machine approach of sustaining UNRWA or sustaining the status quo of the PA, for example, while at the same time tolerating settlements, expansions, settler terror, annexation, apartheid, application of um, all kinds of discriminatory laws. The U.S. administration needs to realize that it is not a matter of, you know, of a periodic flare-ups and ceasefire. This is about ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people. This is about um, apartheid, annexation, settler colonialism. However, it all comes under the umbrella of 73 years of injustice under the Israeli military occupation. <laughs> <laughs>